Far down below, within the untouched reaches of homeworld, lay the pink gem with her stretchy arms coiled around the, a boy and a teen. All inside a pink bubble, it dissipated as the boy woke up slowly, groaning a bit. D did Stephen panted, st sitting up. Did we escape? He looked around, slightly unnerved by the dull colors by the silence of the unknown place that they had fallen into. Spinel's eyes shot wide open as she sat up, still holding Lars. Oh, my stars! Stephen, are you two all right? Lars groaned awake. I, I think so. He stood up in the arms coiled around his sides and pushed them off of him, standing up and now taking a few steps away from them, brushing the dust off of him. Where are we anyway? Spinel stood up, releasing Stephen Finn from her hold. I don't really know. The boy looked up at her. Spinel, they're going to kill you. Why did you say those things? Spinel breathed, out of sorrow mixed with fatigue. I, I wasn't thinking correctly. Oh, Stephen, I'm so sorry. Stephen glanced away just as Lara stared at them. Who were they? They were diamonds, she told them. They were a bunch of triants who conquered the other worlds for empire. They swore vengeance on Rose Quartz for shattering Pink Diamond. Well, that's the way they fought. We need to get out of Homeworld, now. Lars frowned. But how? Don't you have those warping thingamajigs? Not here, no, the pink gems shook her head. We're gonna have to find some place to hide now. Come on. She guided the young males behind her as they walked through the desolated underground. Long green glass vein-like tubes stood above their heads. Broken statues of gems laid about a path that they walked down on. Hey, hey Spinel, Laris panted as they stopped to take a break. Do you even know where, we're, where you're going? Spinel bit her lip. No, I just have a feeling they're looking for us. When she moved over to clutch her hand on Stephen's hand, he shifted away from her. Stephen? Lars asked, noticing what happened. Are you okay? He didn't reply. Spinel sighed miserably. Stephen was unhappy with her, even when she explained everything. But at now after what she had done, lying to him was for his life. She couldn't tell blame him. She never will. Suddenly her pigtails perked up as she heard something and within the light, light appearing from them. She saw what it was, a robonoid. But Spinel knew it, what it was made for. Run, she shrieked, grabbing the boys and dragged them around with them with the robonoid fired a laser. Destroying half at the head of one of the statues, she turned to a corner and quickly took the boys behind a gem st structure. Spinel looked over her shoulder to see the robonoid scanning for the area for them. D jeez Lars said through his gasp. What was all that about? The pink gem put a finger to her lips, signaling him to be quiet as she whispered, That some kind of robonoid is made for shattering gems. Both of you stay here a while ago, distract the thing. She ran off, allowing the robonoid to follow after her. Stephen sighed, standing up and walking away from Lyra's catch breath. Stephen? Seriously, where are you going? Nowhere, the boy grumbled. The teen stared before groaning in frustration. Great. We, here we are, two scared losers stuck in this strange, strange place with a bunch of aliens trying to kill us, and now we're leaving your crazy mom to distract something that could kill her? No, she's not crazy, Stephen snapped. Lars took a step back, knowing that he hit a hard spot. He relaxed, feeling ashamed. I I'm sorry, Stephen. I'm just so scared right now. In fact, I've always been... I've never been able to stand up for myself because I'm just a scaredy cat. Well, expect me for me when it comes to baking. That's besides the point. Stephen continued to eye his companion, his scowl fading softly as his sympathy flickered in his gaze. I I'm sorry too. Everything's been happening then and now. It's a lot to take in. Spinel lied to me all this time, but she and Pearl had no other choice. Lars didn't know how to respond to that. They had heard footsteps as Spinel approached him. I, I think we lost it. Stephen was about to say something until he heard a quiet voice speak. Hello? Who are you strangers? They all looked to see a hand poking out, pointing the hole towards where it was coming coming from. Really? So are we. Come down here. You'll be safer. Spinel then looked was a little suspicious, but looked over to the boys and knew she had to protect the both of them. She gestured them to them. 
The Frey hopped into the hole, landing in the ground with a thump. She kept her arms coiled around as the figure stepped closer. Are you alright? You free didn't land too hard, did you? Spinel shook her head. Of course not. Thank you for saving our lives, whoever you are. Her voice disappeared as the gemstone in her stomach illuminated cherry red, revealing the two gems conjointed to the waist. Laris yelped at the sight of them, and the gems flinched from that. Oh, Spinel gently placed the boys down and slowly approached the gem. You're Ruti, right? Well, both of you are. Thank you for saving us, Stephen added. The Ruti twins inspected Stephen and Laris. This, how bizarre. What are they? Those two certainly don't look like the gem we've ever seen. Spinel laughed lightly. They're not gems, they're humans. This is Stephen and this is Lars. I'm only half gem, Stephen showed the gemstone on his stomach. The Ruti twins seemed to understand. Then who are you? Your gem is unfamiliar. Stephen blushed a bit, rubbing the back of her head. Oh, oh, oh that's right. My name's Spinel. Spinel? The Ruti twins' eyes widened. Could it be? It can't, but it has to be. Before Spinel could say anything, they heard the robonauts above them, and the Ruti twins quickly took them down to the cavern, their gemstones lighting the way, much to the Spinel's cardigan. They have conjoined the gems that kept ravening about her walk. It's pink diamonds, Spinel. I, I thought she was just a legend. She then just took of much more than we imagined. What are the others say? Others? Lars nervously gulped. Yes, there are others waiting for us, but they won't hurt you. When they continued walking, Stephen whispered to Spinel, Are you sure we can trust them? I hope so, Spinel murmured back, hoping the Ritty twins didn't hear. At the end of the cavern, the group arrived at the cliffside, starting to into seemingly endless pillars with millions of non-exit holes. Spinel winced at the haunting sight and kept her grip on Stephen and Lars. What is this place? Lars questioned. A kindergarten, Stephen's voice was hardly heard above whisper. A really, really big one. Unbelievable, Spinel thought. Why were they so many? And why down here? Through a tunnel, the Rutty twins got into the free refugees into a room and whistled. The sound of echoing was on the walls. We're back, they called. We're here. It's okay to come out. Another tall gem peeked out from one of the exit holes from the floor. But what from Spinel could see was a fusion. A fusion between pearl and a, a pearl and a ruby. Oh, thank goodness, the fusion said fearfully as they walked out. I hope you weren't being followed. You weren't, right? I hope you double-checked. She laid her eyes on the three newcomers and gasped at the fright. You've been followed. Um, hi, Stephen approached the petrified fusion. Don't worry, I'm not a fret or anything. It's okay, Rhoda Knight, the conjoined gem reassured. Relax, we brought them here. Rhoda Knight was uh, still unsure. Can we trust them? Spinel nodded. Of course. Just as the Retty twins were about to introduce Spinel, a tiny peach-colored gem stepped out from behind Lars and jumped back, frightened a bit. Everyone, the little gem chirped. A wondrous pedric... A pre prediction has come before me. The red twins of Reti will bring me no one, no two, but f new free strangers to our different place of hiding. Rotten groaned. We know, Paradisa, your prediction has already happened. They were being chased by one of those horrible robonoids, the Reti twin Rutl twins said. Don't tell me you tried to fight those things. No, 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 of course not. Those things were just about to be scanned when we pulled them under. We were just in time. Let me see. A deep low voice came from behind them. A giant gem with six gemstones appeared. Lars screamed in fright, running behind Spinel as the giant gem fusion came into close. They don't look like gems, but this one does. She spoke slowly. Rotonite's eyes widened. F -f Thanks, Spinel stumbled, but Lars is a human, and Steven's only half gen. I'm just a simple Spinel. Spinel? Ooh, you're the Spinel we've heard about. The one who used to belong to Pink Diamond, right? Did you hear about that Fortnite? The twins asked the new fusion. We brought the famous Spinel. How homeworld we are to meet you, Spinel, said Fortnite. Spinel swallowed down the awkwardness that she felt. Thanks, but besides that, who are you all? 
We are the off-colors, replied Run Knight, and it seems that your little friends are off-color too. No wonder they chased you off the surface. What do you mean, off-color? Stephen asked. You know you're wrong, the Ruthie twins answered. Not right, flawed. The Prashagonska then approached them, excitedly. Oh, my stars, this gem is fabled pink diamond spinel. Like her, Spinel pointed out the green tiny gem. Stephen tilted his head. I don't see anything wrong with you. Gems are like us, aren't needed, Flortai explained. Papadicia can only predict things just that happened. Here comes the Flortnite, Pachuiga said. They all turned to Ronite, who explained, and a fusion like me is unforgivable. When my, our Morganite, I was found. Let's just say that we were replaceable. But our story is nothing. I mean, Fortnite, how many gems are you? Six, the Mass of Fusion said. Maybe more if we find the right gem. And then here it is, the Red Sea Twins spoke up. You mean, you're not a fusion? Asked Steven. We're just a reptile that came out, came out for wrong. We survived all because the other Red Sea ran away when we emerged. We survived because they weren't afraid of us. Spinel and Steven stared at the gems with sympathy and Lars blinked. Afraid of you? So you've been hiding your whole lives. What happens if they find you? The conjoined gems glance at each other. We'll be shattered, Parvishra set finished. Lars looked down until everyone else heard something. Oh no, the twins cried as they saw a red light scan in the area. Rut Knight panicked. You were followed. They're gonna find us. We're gonna they're gonna break us. This is our fault, yelled Stephen. If it weren't for us, you'd be fine. We couldn't leave you here, said the Road Knight twins. We had to do something. What do we do? Lars yelped. Stephen shrugged as the boys, boys stood closer. We gotta hide now. All three of the Robo Knights floated inside. Off colors, Lars Spinel, Stephen, and Lars went ran to hide. The pink gem managed to find a hole big enough that she huddled back into the arms, still coiled around the boys. Spinel noticed Lars hyperventilating and whispered some calming words. Stephen, on the other hand, stopped squirming and hugged tight a hug around his body. It felt the feeling of being loved and protected. As soon as he knew he's always dead since he was a baby, thinking fast, he summoned his shield. Lars finally calmed down and sighed, F -f Thanks, Spinel. The pink gem nodded sweetly before peeking out of the two robo nose slowly and steadily they scanned through the holes of the close to the Ruti twins, who realized their fates. Everyone gasped. Rotten Knight was covering her Patronissa's eyes. Spinel and Steven then continued to stare in horror, but Laris felt a huge surge of bravery to get out of Spinel's arms and ran out. We gotta do something! Laris, the two shout for him. The Roto twins discovered coward, preparing their indivindable until a rock was thrown at the Robonauts, and they turned to face Laris, who scanned Laris and the teen remaining himself to be okay and afraid of the Robonoids annoyed him. That's it, Spinel realized. Shattering the Robonoids must be the only the other gems. You're safe, Steven agreed. Lars then chuckled a bit, feeling a bit proud of himself. Alright, it looks like the tables have turned. Human Lars, Pradvishka suddenly appeared, shocking Rotonite. I've been processed the most marvelous vision. Oh, you human Lars, and we'll be safe with the Robonoids, which only target gems. The other Robonoids scanned the tiny gemstones before preparing to fire, but Lars was able to pu push Pyrisha out and himself out of the way just as they fire at the ground. The teen gasped for a at breath. I think the that's the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Lars, help! Stephen cried, holding on to Spinel now as the Robonoids greeted them, scanning their gemstones on Spinel's chest and Stephen's belly. Spinel gritted her teeth and screamed, Not my son, you piece of trash! She punched a Robo-Bonoid and it crashed into another robo knight, punching, destroying the other two until there was only one left. It fired a laser at the two, but Steven instinctively blocked it with his shield and defected the laser and shot itself from the other wall into Ronight. But don't worry, human Steven, Pradyshka chirped happily as Spinel lifted her up. Spinel will protect you. Pradyshka, the terrified fusion, called out, come back! Her yelling brought the robo knight's attention and it scanned around, which made the Robo Knight freeze up. Not to mumma too soon, Lars jumped out of the way, avoiding it and finding the fusion's gemstones. Uh, okay, Lars breathed pan 
picking up the rock shard. Okay, okay. With an act of courage, the teen jumped off the robonoid and whacked it at sensor fire multiple times on the off-color gems, avoiding being hit. Lars, Steven screamed. Jump off, now! You're going to get hurt! Spinel joined in. The tiny gem wrapped it in her arm, appearing mildly concerned, but the teen ignored, teen ignored them, and he rose out to rock shard up. Eat this! Plunging the shard towards the sensor, causing the last robonaut to explode, sending the Lars flying in his head, slamming against the pillar, and sickening crack could be heard as he fell to the ground, motionless. Steven's horror intensified. Lars! He then ran towards the teen, shaking him desperately, repeating his name. Spinel ran over as well, gasping for air as the off-color gems cheered upon their victory. Steven? He... The boy whimpered as he placed on a hand on his Lars chest. He's dead! Spinel's breath stopped, and the boy hiccuping and laughed and hugging Lars tightly. No! What have I done? I saved my baby's life, and just so his friend could die instead? This can't be happening. I didn't even get a chance to forgive him. Oh, Lars, I'm so sorry. With her own tears, she fell to her knees and wrapped the two in her arms, gently rocked Stephen and Lars as if they were infants. Stephen continued to sob quietly to Lars' chest until he lifted his head to give up one last to look at the dead teen. A single tear fell, for his cheek, fell from his cheek and landed on Lars' cheek, and it suddenly, from the tear, Lars began to turn pink from the head to dough, his hair becoming pale. Opening their eyes, Spinel and Steven could see the off-color gems intervenience as Lars woke up with groan, brushing from his hair its circuit eye. Oh my, Pradreshka uh, broke the silence. Something incredible is going to happen to Lars. The revived teen sat up. What the heck happened? Lars! Steven shrilled at joy as he hugged Lars tightly. Y you saved us! You destroyed the robo noise, but one of them exploded and then you weren't moving. Spinel hugged the boys close to her. Oh, Lars, you're okay. We just thought we lost you, but Steven was able to bring you back. What? Lars was confused. Bring me back? Steven wiped the tear from his eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I could do that. You mean I was brought back from... Lars lifted his ha hands and yelled, I'm pink! Steven winced a little, thinking Lars was mad. I know how you feel, but okay. But I don't really know. But your body, are you sore? No. Are you tired? Nope. Do you feel good? No. Do you feel bad? S Steven! Steven! Spinel calmed the frantic boy down. We don't need to get overwhelmed with questions. He's already under a lot of stress. Lars laughed. No, Miss Spinel. I'm just a little freaked out. At least we all know we're on the same page here, Steven said. From the distance, everyone can hear the sounds of Robonoids down to the tunnel. They're back, Raw Knight panicked. Those shattering Robonoids are back. Quickly, block the entrance, said Forchi. Of course, Spinel stood up and looked at the two boys. You both stay right here. With their nod, Spinel walked over to help the Ruti twins, and Raw Knight and Floristory would push the giant rocket to block the entrance of the room. This is going to be bad enough, Raw Knight whimpered. Thankfully, the red scanners failed to scan through the tiny gas with the entrance, downing the noise faded. They seem to have overlooked us, the mass of fusion spoke. For the time being, quickly, Parshreska pointed at the entrance. Block the other one. Of course, Spinel and the tiny gem patted the tiny gem's head. Already done, tiny, she said, looking up with concern. But if that's the case with the robonoids looking for Steven or I, then we'll need to find another way to escape. How? Steven looked up at her. Navy, then from the long ago, said stole a roaming eye from her to find her friends, and the crystal gems won't have any way to get back to Homeworld. And if they did, Spinel thought, Homeworld would find them and... Why don't we just head out there, Lara suggested. Robonite shook her head. No, 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 no. If we leave this cavern, we'll be completely exposed. But if we stay here, Forte said, they'll find us for sure. The Rofle twins, twins put their heads, hands on their chins and fought so that we could either get stay here and get caught or we go out there and get caught everyone felt silent not knowing what to do until spinel noticed something about lars and expected him what wait lars felt weird by spinel's narrow gaze uh-huh steven the pink gem looked over to the boy could you try something the boy lifted his head like what spinel picked him up and held him close to lars touch his hair 
Stephen, unsure of what he was going to do, patted Laris' head. Unexpectedly, it glowed when it made contact. Stephen, of course, Laris shrieked and nearly jumped back from shock, touching around his hair. What was that? It lit up. You all saw it. We did, Spinel nodded in surprise. Laris, we think you've got the lion's powers. The teen started to stare at her with bewilderment. Powers? Stephen gasped at what she meant. I think my tears did more than bring them back to life. It gave him the po power portal changing thing that from that the lion could do. What is a lion? One of the real toy twins whispered as the god who who basically shrugged. Laris was still freaked out. So, 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 since I got this weird thing going on my hair, what are you going to do? I think, Stephen thought. We, I would should try this first. I'll need you to go for your head. Are you going to possess me? No, it, I'm a literal intense. Hmm, okay. I trust you. After telling the off-colors to stand back, Spinel watched her boy boy step through Lara's head and disappear within moments. She literally, she silently prayed due to the stars in some way to get her. Stephen, Lara's, and all the off-color gems back to Earth. Then Stephen appeared in Lara's head again. It works! Spinel felt hope flare up. It does? Stephen hopped from Lara's head, causing him to fall back, but Spinel was able to catch him before he hit could land. F thanks! Spinel nodded before turning her head to the boy. So we can head back to Earth? Stephen nodded vigorously, but the Ruttle twins looked confused. But we have heard Earth was declimated. It's incredible. Spinel and Stephen were able to explain what happened in Earth was the real story of, P of Pink Diamond being Rose Quartz. How she faked on shattering to save Earth, even if it came to a healthy, pl heavy place of corrupting the thousands of gems and the crystal gems were able to get back to homeworld and left chaos shocked. All my stars were at night began after the, be the story was finished. We have been lied to for our last few years. St Spinel sighed. Pinks don't, didn't give, give, um, Pinks didn't, Pink didn't give Pearl me or me the choice. Believe me, I would have told everyone if it weren't for that stupid promise we both made. And for that, we suffered because of it. And we're so sorry that happened, the Rittle twin said. That must have been an awful thing to go to. Pervish got gasped. Pink Diamond was Rose Quartz? We could hardly believe it, Flortoy spoke, and her ha hand to her face. Stephen glanced out. Yeah, but we had to take in... But really, Spinel added. R Earth is truly a wonderful place where you ever be we without judgment or those triants above us. Judgment? No more hiding, that means? That sounds wonderful. Stephen smiled brightly. It is, and now we have a portal to get us all there. All? Laris frowned. But how am I supposed to go through your own head? Spinel and Laris then felt dread and did replace with hope, realizing that they wouldn't be able to get back in with Laris. Oh, stars, no. Spinel quietly panicked, slowly panicked. Laris, we're so... The, but no, the, G, the team cut her off. I'll get it. You two should go. I'll stay in here and help the off-colors. Stephen looked at his head. No, Lars, you're going to die here. There has to be another way we can all get us home. Lars then kept his gaze calm and f serious. Look, if Earth, the Earth is a better place than us. No killer robots, just seagulls flying over the sunset. It's beautiful, so just go. I'll look for a guaranteed door to pass by this chance. Spinel's eyes glitter with swirling light. Lars, Road Knight took a step forward, but the conjoined gem stopped her. We won't do it, the floor said, not if it means leaving you behind. What? Laris shouted. I'm trying to be self-relentless here. We all know this planet, she said. We've been hiding in these tunnels for for eons, and you need us to help us grow and to get around it. Besides, off colors stick together. The Rudley twins agree. Twins agree. We'll get to Earth another way. We'll just have to find an alternative route. But still, Laris gestured to Stephen and Spinel. You both have to go back. How can we leave you behind? Spinel asked. Stephen staring up in concern. Well, those giant ladies have, were after you and Stephen, right? Laris pointed out. You won't be safe unless you are back on Earth. Stephen then felt tears swelling up in his eyes. But Lars, Don't argue with me, the team insisted. You are trying to help me. You brought me back to life. Just let me be somebody who deserves it. The two stared at their revulsion, realizing that they indeed had no other choice. All right, Stephen nodded. I'll bring back whatever you need. Then he brought Lars into a tight hug. 
Lucilia appre appreciated. Spinel then looked over to off colors, clasping her hands together as if praying. Please protect Lara's all of you. We will, Forte they replied gently. We can't leave without Lyra's Pradesha uh, yelled in a bit of alarm. See, we'll see you in Earth, I hope, Rat Knight said, added before continuing with, no, 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 we will. Spinel gave him a smile of gratitude before stepping over to Lars and hugging him. Take care, Lars. We'll miss you dearly. Thanks, and I will. And Stephen? Lars looked over the boy. You're still a mama's boy, he grinned. Stephen blinked and laughed a bit. <laughs> I guess I am. So if you could just... Right. After stepping out of the lion's mane, Stephen and Spinel landed on the earth. Earth and the lion shake his head up and upon return. The pink gem stood over and placed Stephen on the ground. Closing, seeing her eyes, she felt the wonderful breeze of the brush through her form. Oh, how she missed her for a very long while. After that cursed place, the pink gem stood up and placed uh, Stephen on the ground. Closing her eyes, and felt the wonderful breeze. Hey, where are we all in the beach anyway? Stephen asked himself. Lion didn't just take me to the house? Spinel blinked with eyes open. open. Let's just stay inside for now. The boy boy looked up at her and hugging and tugging on her dress. Spinel got the message and lifted Stephen up on the ground with one arm. Cradling him, she nuzzled against her shoulder and she kissed his forehead. I'm so sorry for what I did, she whispered. I never wanted to lie to you or anyone. And I'm sorry for what I did, he replied. I don't hate you. I never did. Spinel felt a throat burn. She tried to swallow it down, but she walked up to the stairs of the beach house and prepared herself for the back backlash or harsh words for any of the gems would say to them. She knew she deserved it. The pink gem holding Stephen close to her opened the door and saw the door was dark. Not just the fact that it was late dusk, but the lights were off as well. Most of the shocking part was seeing everyone was inside the living room. Pearl was finishing explaining the story about Pink Diamond to Greg, Amethyst, Ruby, Sapphire, Peridot, Lapis, and Jasper. The gems all listened to disbelief and sorrow having to disappear, crying for some time ago. However, when they w heard the door creak open, they turned to slightly disheveled Spinel and a worried Stephen cradled in her arms. Hey, hey, hey she said, began. Thick hot tears began to spill down Pearl's cheeks, and she cried out in a high-pitched voice, Spinel! Stephen! Spinel expectedly her reaction in fury, but instead was a hug from the sobbing pale gem, was joined by Greg and the rest of the gems, even Jasper, ignoring their former expeditions. Spinel and Stephen were overjoyed to be back home safe and sound and hugging everyone back, eyes filled with happy tears.